It's the most delicious time of the year. The Washington Post Spring Dining Guide is out, and Mr. Food himself, Tom Sietzma, joins us. I want to just, first of all, reference the getup. Not to get all like, Oscars, who are you wearing, but this is not how you look <laughs> in real life, correct? This is not what I look like in real life. Uh, no, I, I wear a disguise uh, on TV in part because I like to get the same experience as most people do, most civilians do when they eat out. What do you hope people get from your spring dining guide when they read it? Because it's out now. Well, I hope they get hungry, okay. first of all, <laughs> and I hope they check out restaurants. This is a look at new restaurants, but um, increasingly there's no reason for people in Falls Church or Columbia to go into the city because they have really good restaurants pretty much right where they are or nearby. We love the number four around here. So what are four like themes you could pull from the restaurants Four now? themes. Well, um, one of them is French. We've got places like Le Clou and La Vente Garde in Georgetown and because we're all getting ready for the Olympics we're all right getting ready for the Olympics four. in 20, right 24 <laughs> yeah yeah they're all preparing there you know get out your chopsticks we have got so many really good Asian restaurants across mm -hmm. the board we've got Chinese we've got Malaysian the one constant that I'm sorry to report on uh, that is still with us is the noise pollution that exists in so many new restaurants yeah let's talk about that because you brought like this says Radio Shack on it by right, the way so right. this is something really special what is this gadget? This is, I, I found this, Tommy, during spring cleaning last week. It's the original sound meter that I used uh, in restaurants beginning in 2008. I no longer use this little <laughs> antiquity, uh, but I, I have a decibel app, a couple that I use. Uh, and I'm lucky in that I usually go to restaurants two or three times mm -hmm. at least so that I can eat the range of the menu, but also take different sound checks in different parts of the room. And then I come up with an average there. Talk to me through your process, too, because I think some people, and I was one of these before we first met, being like, this guy doesn't take my mouth to restaurants. I, I try and make it interesting for readers and not bore them with a steady diet of, like, the same neighborhoods or the same cuisine mm -hmm. points. You know, restaurants have been through so much. Sure. There's a lot going on in that industry. So what do you hope the average customer who sits down knows. So I think it's 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 a little give and take here. Mm -hmm. You know, diners have to be understanding of the cost of doing business right now and the fact that all these new restaurants are really struggling to find talent, you know, to cook, to serve, to do everything. On the flip side, what I'm also including in my dining guide this year is 10 ways that restaurants might uh, perfect what they do. Hmm. For instance, wouldn't it be great if uh, for a couple hours on given nights, they had a quiet night, sort of like the quiet car on Amtrak, <laughs> you know, where people had to speak in library voices and, and no music was heard. Um, I can imagine this will be an older audience doing that. Oh, the quiet car sounds like my personal version of hell. So oh, it I, does. Yes, okay. yes. But I can see there yeah, being an audience of people who would want to do sure. that. Sure. And on the flip side, I think there should be dedicated hours for young families, too, mm -hmm. who also have different needs, who will not be quiet. Um, and, um, you know, price things accordingly so it makes it family friendly for people too. Tom Seedsma, I usually say that I have the best job in town. This guy has the best job in town. Thanks for joining us. Thank you Incognito, for having me. the Spring Dining Guide in the Washington Post is out now.